Welcome to Das Geek. So one of the things that after transitioning to Linux has changed besides the operating system itself is obviously the software that I've been using. Now it's important to note in this video that I'm going to talk about my software habits that have changed and the money that I'm saving. But even if you're stuck on Windows for whatever reason and or another operating system like Mac, some of these packages that I'm going to talk about, in fact, a lot of them are also available within those other operating systems. So you can take a look at those and you could save some money just switching to open source uh, programs out there without having to necessarily switch your OS. Although, obviously, after I did the 30 days of Linux challenge, I found it a much better option to switch to Linux and I haven't looked back since. But in case you didn't want to, uh, you definitely can download some of these. And it's not that I didn't know open source wasn't available then. It's more so that I didn't understand the quality of open source software that was out there. And because of that, I always assumed that if I had to do video editing, for instance, that I had to go with some big name product like an Adobe Premiere or, you know, a Final Cut Pro or something that's, that you actually are paying money for so that I could get the quality videos that, especially when I first started my YouTube channel, that I saw all these other popular YouTube channels using or recommending in their blogs or posts or equipment. And I thought, well, I need to mimic that. I've got to have that type of software to be able to produce what they produce. But as you get into your flow and you start learning, you know, what your channel is going to be about and what you're looking for in editing, you find that a lot of those things are simply just uh, nice to have and or that there's open source alternatives out there that are as powerful and in some cases more powerful than the tools that you're paying money for. And that's really what this video is meant to um, pertain to. So what this is going to show you is the software that I was using in Windows before I transitioned to Linux, and now the software that I use now that I primarily utilize Linux. And again, like I said, uh, back then I could have used this software in some cases there, but the first one like video editing Caden Live is available in Windows, but it's not a simple task to actually get it to work in Windows. You have to do your own compiling and things or something or rather there. You're not going to just be able to download it and set it up and run it unless somebody's kind of done that work somewhere where I couldn't find. Um, but at least from Caden Live site itself, that's not offered. So this first one is kind of a really good case because I originally was paying for Adobe Premiere, which depending if you get it on sale or not, and I got these prices current uh, at $89 to 149 bucks for this. And then of course, every six months or year or so, they come out with a new version that has new features out there that again, you're gonna have to pay upgrade costs on or get new licenses, et cetera for. So switching to Caden Live, which I'll show you here, has saved me that 89 to $149. I didn't put per year because technically you don't have to upgrade, but certainly there's a big push to because you're getting advertised to constantly with these programs uh, that you use that when they, especially when they have a new version, something you're not going to have happen in open source software. So this is Caden Live. If those of you are familiar with Adobe Premiere, you've got your preview window here, which of course you can stretch, make it, put it on its own screen, et cetera, detach the tools. You've got your clips that you can add in. You have all of these effects for audio, blurs, GPU effects, motions, alpha manipulations, audio, really anything you can think of there. And you've got tons of transitions and you've also got libraries where you can go and download new wipes and render profiles and title templates. And you can render in many different uh, formats here, WebM, MP4, MPEG-2, WebM VP9 and 4K, MP4 H.265, and these are just the standard ones. You can also uh, get other rendering options as well. So obviously this meets all the needs that I have for video editing. And I've come to love Caden Live. I've come to love it more than I like Adobe Premiere, in fact. Now, if there are specific things that you use in Adobe Premiere that you have to have, uh, then you need to check and make sure all of those options are there. But as far as titling, cutting, adding in effects, transitions, adding in you know, multiple images or videos on top of videos and shrinking them down and all of that, Caden Live is perfectly capable of it and does it extremely well and fast and is a fantastic tool. 
The next one is browsers, and some of these are zero cost uh, across both. Uh, I primarily use Vivaldi and Firefox in Windows, especially towards the end, a lot of Vivaldi. Uh, and you can use Vivaldi and Firefox, obviously, in Linux. My habits changed a little bit in Linux, though. I didn't really go with the Vivaldi, mainly because I was distribution hopping, and most of the distributions came with Firefox or Chromium. So generally, I look for Firefox. That's kind of my go-to. But every once in a while, install Chromium as well. And of course, you can have Chrome or whatever browser you want on any of these operating systems. Almost all of them are cross-compatible across the board. Um, so a little bit of a shift there, but not a major one. Uh, for antivirus, of course, we've got Webroot. Uh, I think in a Windows environment, it's very important that you have an antivirus program. Uh, some will say, well, it's not 100% necessary if you're a smart user, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think obviously Windows is targeted more often. Uh, for viruses and malware and that type of stuff. And Webroot was my favorite at the time, and I paid about $36 per year for Webroot. Still the one I recommend for those who are stubborn and stuck on Windows. Uh, for Linux, I use Bitdefender. Obviously, Linux is not targeted as often. It's a little more secure in how it's designed, and uh, you don't really need to pay for a uh, service out there. You've got a great open source uh, Defender out there for you, antivirus, etc., now, some could say, well, I can get free antivirus software on Windows. Yes, you can. But I always found that it did not protect as well as the paid for services in a Windows environment. It always seemed like it was missing uh, certain viruses or missing certain malwares. And I still continually clean viruses and things off of people's computers for stuff that they download, friends, etc. that are on Windows and Mac OS for that matter. Uh, those of my friends who have taken my advice and used a paid for service instead of the free ones generally don't get those viruses. So you can make the conclusions you want. That's just the personal experience that I've had. So the next thing we'll talk about is word processing. Now, when I was in Windows, I used Microsoft 365 because when I'm at work, those are the programs that were available to me. And I really didn't think I could live without Word and Excel especially Excel. It's about a, spent a lot of time working in Excel and learning all the formulas and graphs and all of the stuff there, as well as PowerPoint. So it's just something that I used at work and felt very comfortable with at home. I like the grammar and spelling check in Office. I know some people don't, uh, but I find it superior to most other programs out there. LibreOffice is absolutely free. It provides you the same spreadsheet, PowerPoint, uh, like uh, environments that you can make these documents in. For instance, this is their writer here that I built this in. You can see you put a little quick table together. You've got a lot of the familiar options that you have within Word. And I would say it's very, very competitive with Word. Personally, I don't feel that it's better, but I think it is good enough, especially for my personal use. And as somebody who's done writing and that type of things, uh, the compatibility with it is incredible. I can open other office uh, files and be able to read them without having any real big conversion issues or anything along those lines. So I think ultimately it's a very good option. There are also a lot of options out there like Google Docs, et cetera, that you can use. So there are many options here. I like LibreOffice. Um, I, again, I don't think it's necessarily superior, but for $99 a year that I'm saving not using uh, Office 365 and the fact that I've not found anything yet. In fact, all your formulas and things that I use within Excel, the, the basic ones for home use, uh, all work perfectly fine in LibreOffice and they're exactly the same. If you want to do an equal sum or totals or any of those type of formulas, you can write them exactly as you would Excel uh, in LibreOffice and it's going to work just fine. So I think LibreOffice is a fantastic thing and I've moved to it full time and I still have my subscription. It hasn't run out. So I can go online and use Microsoft Office 365 if I want through their online platform, but there's no need. So I'm going to let that expire out and uh, save some money per year. On image editing, I used Adobe Premiere. Again, it came with an image editor uh, within there and I used GIMP. Uh, with Linux, I just use GIMP. Now, in Windows, I pretty much only used GIMP because I didn't like the Adobe Premiere's version of it anyways. So not a huge change here. Uh, Adobe Premiere, I didn't add it twice because uh, that would be kind of deceptive since it was packaged in here. And like I said, I primarily use GIMP anyways, but a little bit change in my habits. Uh, Windows obviously is $104. 
uh, for an upgrade. Now, some of you are going to say Windows 10 was free for me. Yes, but you had to buy that Windows 7 license or Windows 8 license to get that free upgrade. Additionally, on top of that, if you change any of your major hardware components, you're going to have to rebuy that license. If you buy a new computer within the cost of that computer, you're repaying for that license. So don't think that they really gave you anything that's free, plus all the advertising and metadata grabbing and everything else that you now have to deal with and reboots whenever you want. And the other day, oh, when I was doing this, uh, doing some research for this, I booted into Windows and it actually, when I was trying to install Krita and things just to make sure they installed in Windows, just like they do within Linux, it actually told me that Krita was not an official Windows app. It was a new message that I hadn't seen before. You see, I haven't been in Windows environment a lot. And it said, if you want, though, you can change your personal settings to allow this, you know, something about these can be dangerous or blah, blah, blah. You can change it to allow things outside of the Microsoft App Store. And I thought, how asinine is that, that you pay this money for this operating system and then they try to lock you down completely into their profile? And how many people who are not experienced geeky techie individuals will see that message and feel like they're now locked into whatever is within Windows uh, system is what they have to use and nothing outside their store. They're kind of forcing their own ecosystem on people for their apps and things. And I, I felt that was really ridiculous. But now with Linux, I pay zero dollars for upgrades. I can switch desktop environments, switch distributions entirely and still have zero cost. So pretty awesome. Painting programs uh, didn't really use any in Windows um, and in Linux, Krita and Inkscape. Krita will work in Windows, not sure about Inkscape, and those are zero dollars. For music, I'm still paying for a service, so I'm not saving any money here. And it really astounded me. <laughs> Some of you go, simple math, you moron. But just taking that monthly fee, you know, that $9.99 just doesn't seem a lot. And obviously, times 12, that's pretty easy math to do, right? Um, but for some reason, actually doing this here and actually writing out $119.88 is what you're paying for these services was quite shocking to me. You're paying, you know, $100 a year to, for access into your music. I'm not sure I spent that much on CDs. Maybe I did uh, back in the day. But either way, uh, YouTube Red was what I was using in Windows, especially towards the end. Uh, I switched over to Tidal. Now, I don't pay for Tidal. I, I got one of these promotional deals where I got some uh, free months in there. Eventually, I will have to. So I have their Hi-Fi plan, which is actually $20 a month currently, um, but I don't pay that for it. But uh, if I was to stay with Tidal after that promotional uh, period trial to try out Tidal, I would probably go down to the $9 a month option. The $9 is pretty standard, whether you're Spotify or whomever. Some have some lower tier plans, but that's pretty standard. Uh, but definitely seeing that whole 120 bucks kind of made me think, yeah, maybe I need to look for something different there. Audio editing, Audacity, Audacity. I used Audacity for everything. Audacity is amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. Website development, mostly Notepad++ and Windows. And in Linux, I use brackets. For streaming and recording, I used XSplit in Windows. I also used OBS. Uh, but especially towards the end, most of my videos, if you see the kind of uh, videos where I don't have a background. I was using XSplit. It had a software that you could add on to it that would actually take out the background without having a green screen behind you. So I used X, uh, XSplit, which is about $60 per year. Um, but uh, other times I'd switched to OBS. I don't really recall which one I was at at the very end. But OBS, obviously, most people know about is an amazing screen recording application that you can use for streaming you can use for content like this. It's just very versatile, it's free and beautiful, beautiful software. Uh, for 3D graphics, uh, Blender, Blender in both cases there. Uh, password manager, Dashlane, I used over in Windows when I went to Linux. I could still use Dashlane through Wine, but I didn't wanna use Wine for anything. It's just uh, not something I really enjoy playing with the configurations and things with very often. So I just switched to KeyPass there. Uh, for my password manager. So free, free. Uh, there are uh, key pass you can use in Windows as well. So uh, if you want a free password manager, uh, keep in mind, you will have to do some cloud syncs and things like that, or add in some plugins to do cloud syncs if you want to have access to it everywhere, all your passwords in, in any place. 
search engine, I used Google a lot in Windows, except towards the very end where I switched to DuckDuckGo and Linux, uh, exclusively DuckDuckGo. I find DuckDuckGo search results are just as good as Google's. Um, sometimes I won't feel like I'm getting what I want out of DuckDuckGo. I'll go into Google, do the same search, and it gives me the exact same results. So I feel DuckDuckGo does an amazing job on its results engine, and it absolutely is a privacy uh, individual who's uh, concerned about privacy dream. It doesn't track you. It does show ads, but it's not based on you personally. It's just ads on what you search on, which is really what model they should all be on instead of into this privacy invading BS. Um, cloud storage. I use Dropbox and OneDrive, OneDrive specifically because we have a 365 subscription. You got a bunch of space with it. Uh, now in Linux, I use my Synology NAS, which is an amazing, amazing piece of beauty. So go check out my video if you're not familiar with uh, Synology NAS because it will blow your mind on what you can do with that thing. So I'm very happy to have found that. But you could use a Synology NAS with Windows as well. Uh, email client, Thunderbird, Thunderbird uh, across the board, gaming, Steam. So my total here, if I take my total and uh, add it up, it's $587 worth of software uh, that I had for Windows in that world. And about $483.88 of that was yearly. So for upgrades or switching um, to the latest and greatest, you'd have to pay that per year. Um, whereas in Linux, it cost me about $159 per year. And that's because of the Pia VPN and this title uh, subscription right here. So if I got rid of that title subscription, this isn't really software. It's through the browser, but music's a major part of a lot of people's uh, collection. So I left it there anyway. So really, if you take uh, these two out here, you could see it would be more like, uh, what, $40 per year here and this minus uh, 119. So. Still pretty amazing, about $324 per year in savings uh, that I've had since I've switched to Linux um, and specifically switched to open source, more open source software. Some of that was forced because these software companies don't write for Linux. Some of them do, some of them don't, but uh, if you have no tucks, you get no bucks. So last thing I'll leave you with is use some of these savings that we get from using this amazing software to donate to some of these projects that you absolutely love. Uh, Caden Live and, and some of these others have donation options out there. So if you have the resources and you feel compelled to, definitely feel free to drop them, uh, you know, some money to say thank you for all the developers and work and community that goes into a lot of these projects. Not everything I don't think on here is completely open source, but uh, the idea behind it is these, these programs are completely free to utilize and absolutely provide tremendous, powerful solutions uh, that allow everyone to have access. As long as you can get access to a computer, you can have access to some of this stuff for free and keep your costs down and be able to produce something beautiful. So that's it. That's my video. Again, it's just my habits, how they've changed since I've switched to Linux. Leave your comments below. Let me know how your habits have changed. What software should I check out that I don't have on this list yet? This isn't everything I use, of course, but these are the main things that change since I switched from Windows to Linux. And uh, what are some ways that you've saved money now? How much money have you saved since you switched to Linux? Maybe you used Adobe, what is that? Adobe CC6, whatever, that costs $700 a year uh, for a subscription to, something ridiculous like that. So you may have way more savings opportunities than even I had. Uh, that's the beauty of it. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains.